Hello and welcome to Bay College's College Algebra Online Lectures. In this video, I'm Jim Helmer by the way, in all the videos. In this video, we're looking at section 1.2 which is quadratic equations. If you recall in the previous section 1.1, we dealt with linear equations. Well, this is our quadratic equation in standard form where a, b, and c is just real numbers as long as a isn't zero because if a is zero, we're back to a linear equation. Well, these are second degree equations. And the reason why they're second degree equation is because we have a squared uh, variable as our highest power. So when we're dealing with these, generally we'll want to set them equal to zero depending on what method that we're uh, using to solve a quadratic equation. And we use these properties of equality. What we do to one side, we do to the other. That never changes. Well, we're going to look at four different methods. And the first one is factoring. So let's look at an example. If I have x squared equals 4. This equation is a second degree because my variable is squared equals 4. What we can do here is we can factor. In order to factor, we want to put it in standard form. We want to set it equal to 0. And I can do that by essentially subtracting 4 from both sides of the equation. Now I can factor, and hopefully our factoring skills are very strong at this point in algebra because we're going to use factoring all semester long. And the stronger you have that as a skill, the more uh, easy this will come to you. So I recognize this as the difference of squares because both of these are squared terms and we're subtracting them. So it factors to x minus 4, x plus 4 still equal to 0. And now we could just use what's called the zero factor theorem. 0 times anything is 0. So whatever makes this factor 0 times whatever this is will be 0. True statement. Whatever makes this 0 times this will be 0. So the zero factor theorem says take each one individually and, oh, thank you. My uh, camera operator just notified me that I didn't take the square root of that value. That's how we factor. So even, even the instructors make mistakes, right? Watch out for that. All right, so now I can use the zero factor theorem. If this value is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 times anything is 0. If this value is negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So we have 2 and negative 2. I just solved them. But now I can go back and always check my solutions. Is 2 squared equal to 4? Yes, is negative 2 squared? Well, negative times itself is positive. 2 times 2 is still 4. So both of these solutions do hold true in the original equation. Now, another method we can use is the square root property. The only time we can use the square root property or factoring is if, it, if it's factorable or if it's a perfect square. Well, one key to that, if we take the same equation, is we have to recognize this. Is this a perfect square? Is this a perfect square? Well, this doesn't have to be. But what we, uh, in order to use this property, this term, whatever it may be, or binomial, or whatever, has to be a perfect square. Because we want to get this variable by itself, so I can take the square root of both sides. One thing we must always remember is when we introduce a squ square root to an equation, we have to remember it's plus or minus, right? Plus or minus. So what I do here, if I take the square root of both sides, the square root of x squared is x plus or minus the square root of 4. You have to remember plus or minus. There are two possibilities. Now, we just simplify this, and we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2. x equals plus or minus 2. So that since this was a perfect square, we could use the square root property to take the square root of both sides. And we essentially got the exact same answer, right? Positive 2 and negative 2. And we don't have to check it because we already know that that works. Now, here's your quiz. This here is a perfect square trinomial, which means it is a perfect square. So what you can do is you can factor it to its perfect square and then use the square root property to solve for x. So that's your quiz. Factor this and use the square root property. The next example we're going to look at is completing the square another tool that we can use. And this, this 1 half of b quantity squared, this is your tool that you have to memorize. Put it in your mental toolbox, so to speak. Now, in order to complete the square, 
This here does not factor, so we can't factor it, and it's not a perfect square, so we can't use the square root property. So this is another method to use uh, in, in an approach to solve a quadratic equation. The first thing we're going to do is isolate the variables. All right, to isolate the variables, I can just add 2 to both sides. Because my variable is x, I've got to isolate it. x squared minus 2x, I'm adding 2 to both sides. And I left this space here for a reason. Because the next step says, well, make sure that your coefficient in front of the x squared term is a. So we have to make that 1. So in order to do that, I could divide through by a. Well, in this case, it's already 1. So I can skip that step. I don't have to divide the terms. We'll see in the next example that we do have that case. Now, the next thing is we have to find 1 half of b squared. 1 half of b squared, that's your tool. Well, my b value is negative 2. And if we recall, ax squared plus bx plus c, well, this is my b term, the coefficient of the single x term. So I'm going to take 1 half of negative 2 and square that quantity. Well, half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1. The next step is to add this value to both sides of the equation. Use the property of equality. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Now, the reason why this is called completing the square is because we add a constant that makes this a perfect square. We complete it so that this is a perfect square. And now what I can do is I can factor this. This factors to x minus 1, and 2 plus 1 is 3. How do I know it factored to x minus 1? It always factors to what's in here before you square it is what goes in here before you square it, kind of a shortcut. Sometimes if we have a coefficient of a and we divide through, these numbers can get kind of ugly. They can be some pretty miserable fractions for some of us. Well, to try and factor something with fractions can be difficult. Well, this is our shortcut. It's always going to factor to what's in here, x and that value before you square it. Now that it's a perfect square equal to a number, I can use the square root property. So we're going to solve it using the square root property. I take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 3 is plus or minus the square root of 3. When you introduce that square root, don't forget that. And now we just simplify to get x by itself. I just add 1 to both sides. So x is 1 plus or minus the square root of 3. And you can check this in the original equation. If I put this in here and square it, well, I could think of it as just a binomial. Use FOIL, combine like terms. Negative 2 times this quantity, I just distribute negative 2 through it, combine some more like terms, and we'll find things cancel out real nice, and we end up getting 0 equals 0, which is a true statement. This solution does work. For time purposes, I won't actually plug it in and check it. So let's just review. The first thing we want to do is isolate the variable. Make sure that if this coefficient is anything other than 1, you divide through so that you have x squared. The coefficient is 1. Find half of b squared, add it to both sides, factor it now that it's a perfect square, solve using the square root method, and then always check your work. Good policy. So let's do another example, because completing the square is an important concept that we have to have down. So the first thing I'm going to do here is isolate my variables. In this case, it's y. So I'm just subtracting 8 from both sides. I leave that space, because I know I'm going to add some value. Now, this coefficient needs to be 1, so I'm going to divide all the terms by 2. And now I'm ready to complete the square. So if I complete the square, half of b, quantity squared. Well, half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. I'm going to add 9 to both sides. Now this is a perfect square. What does it factor to? Do I even have to think about it? Not really. It factors to what's in here, which is a positive 3. And negative 4 plus 9 is a positive 5. And now it's a perfect square. It's already isolated. I can use the square root method. y plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. 
And now I can subtract 3 from both sides. y equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. This is my answer. I can plug it back in, check it, and it will work. All right. The next thing is the quadratic formula. Sometimes dividing through by that coefficient, we end up with these ugly fractions. Sometimes this might be a better option for us. Uh, honestly, I prefer completing the square when possible because there's so many opportunities to make sign errors. If you do not have the quadratic formula memorized, definitely put it to memory. You will not be given to this on test. You have to have it committed to memory. Another reason why I like completing the square is the only thing I have to remember is 1 half of b squared. All right, so when it comes to quadratic formula, you, the use of quadratic formula, we set this equal to 0. Put it in standard form. All right, just set it equal to 0. And now, identify what your a value is, what your b value is, and what your c value is. a is 1, b is negative 4, and make sure you don't make any sign errors, and c is positive 4. Let's just plug them into the formula. Negative b, well, a negative negative 4 is positive 4, plus or minus. Notice that plus or minus is there because a square root is introduced. b squared, which is 4, negative 4 squared. I'll write that in as 16, do a little simplifying as I'm going. Negative 4 times a, well, we've identified a to be 1, times c, which is positive 4, all divided by 2 times a, while well, 2 times 1 is just 2. Now let's simplify this. 16 minus 4 times 4, while well, negative 4 times 4 is negative 16, 16 minus 16 is 0. And the square root of 0 is 0. So I have 4 plus or minus 0, which is just 4 either way, plus or minus. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that's our solution. x equals 2. We can plug it back into the original equation and check it. 2 squared is 4. Minus 4 times 2 is negative 8. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. So negative 4 equals negative 4. That's a true statement. Let's do another one where we use the quadratic formula. This one's already in standard form, so I can say, OK, a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is negative 1. We'll plug it into our quadratic formula. Negative b, we change its sign, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 1, all over, <coughs> excuse me, 2 times a, which is just 2. Now, negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. 16 and positive 4 is the square root of 20. Now, one thing we have to do when we have radicals is sometimes we have to simplify them. Well, the square root of 20 has some factors in it. It factors to 4 times 5, 4 being a perfect square. So we can pull it out. The square root of 4 is 2 square root of 5. Simplify that radical. Now, if you leave your answer like this, you're going to get some points off on a test. We have to simplify. We can factor out a 2 from both of these terms to cancel with that 2 there. You cannot cancel terms, only factors. So we have to factor out a 2 first, and then it cancels to give us 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. And again, this is another reason why I prefer the completing the square, because I don't have that point where I have to reduce. I'd end up with my answer already simplified. So x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. And we can plug that in and uh, check it. And we'll find that it is a true statement. It does work. Now the next thing we're going to look at is just a piece of the quadratic equation. And it's called the discriminant, that b squared minus 4ac. That's the value under the radical. Well, what we should know about radicals, just like we did in the previous lecture video, is we looked at domain. If we have negatives under that square root, that's an imaginary solution. Well, this is under the square root. So we just assess it. Is this value greater than 0? Otherwise, we're asking, is this value positive? If it is positive, we end up with two real solutions. If it's negative, we end up with two imaginary solutions. And we'll get into imaginary uh, solutions in the next section. If it's 0, in the case where the discriminant is 0, we have one real 0. 
with what's called multiplicity. And we'll talk more about multiplicity in further sections. But you may be asked to use the discriminant to determine the type of solutions. Are we going to get two real solutions, two imaginary solutions, or one real solution with multiplicity? Let's go back to the uh, examples where we use the quadratic formula and see what happens. If we put it into the quadratic formula and just use the discriminant, what type of solution and how many are we looking for? When we plugged it in here, we found the discriminant to be 0. Well, that tells me, according to the discriminant rules, that if what's under here is 0, I better only find one solution. And I did only find one solution, x equals 2, so that holds true. So it's a useful tool. If you're asked to find the real solutions, you know how many you're looking for. Is it 1, is it 2, or is it imaginary? If it's imaginary, the discriminant can save us a lot of time by saying, hey, if this is negative, I don't have to do any more math. It told me to find the real solutions. If we look at this example, when we worked through this, we found the square root of 20, which is a positive value not equal to 0. Well, a positive value means I find two real solutions. Well, it's not nice. It has this uh, radical in it. But it is real. 2 plus this value and 2 minus this value is a real value that we could put somewhere on a number line even though it's irrational. So the discriminant is a good tool that we can use, know how to use it. Understand what the discriminant is. It's just that value under the square root. If it's positive, too real. If it's negative, too imaginary. And if it's 0, one real repeated solution. This has been section 1.2 on quadratic equations. Thank you for watching.